J.R. DeShazo, and I'm the director of the UCLA um, Luskin Center for Innovation, located in the Luskin School of Public Affairs. The, the center, along with UCLA's Office of Information Technology, are delighted to co-host and welcome you here for the conference to advance women in technology. You are among more than 250 leaders coming together to explore strategies for closing tech's gender gap. A large body of research and countless personal experiences underscore that women in tech, in tech face a variety of gender-related barriers. These issues are well known, yet the situation has not improved. Women represent, repre women's representation in tech peaked in the 1980s. But much less is known about strategies that can remove these barriers by addressing their root causes. In particular, as a policy-oriented research center, the Luskin Center recognizes that little has been uh, documented about effective public strategies. Public strategies include public, large-scale public dialogue, government initiatives, nonprofit initiatives, public-private partnerships, and public policies. You represent the diversity of bright minds needed to rethink these strategies to close the gender gap. In the room are executives and employees from the smallest startups to the world's largest tech giants. We also have leaders from government agencies, nonprofits, researchers from the academy, students, journalists, and more. And there are over 100 people on the overflow and wait list, all underscoring the strong interest from all corners in rethinking strategies to advance women in technology. Our hopes that this conference is, is a continuation of a dialogue and the beginning of a collaboration with you, and that these efforts help move forward the strategies that you tell us are most important. Specifically, there'll be a report out that we'll produce and provide to you that articulate uh, next steps and strategies for us all. I'd like to provide a little overview of today's structure. Uh, first, this morning, we're going to have some keynote remarks that will set an important foundation for discussions later today. At 10 o'clock this morning, we'll break into two concurrent tracks. Your name tag lists the track that you're registered for. And given the participatory nature of the conference with sessions that build upon each other, it's important that you remain with your track and please attend the full conference if at all possible. And then after lunch, you'll be part of sm a small group discussion within your track where you'll prioritize strategies to advance after the event. Um, and we'll have a quick um, opportunity to report out so you can hear what others in your track and other tracks are thinking. Finally, we'll have closing remarks followed by a reception that you won't want to miss at 4 o'clock this afternoon. And throughout the day, there's going to be an opportunity for Q&A and discussion. You can tweet questions and comments at hashtag UCLA WIT. A couple of uh, quick housekeeping items. Restrooms are on the other side of the wall. Water and coffee are going to be available throughout the day where you registered this morning. Um, and then I'd like to make just a few acknowledgments. The event um, and your, your presence here today uh, wouldn't be possible without our sponsors, particularly Google and Cisco at the Gold Level Sponsorship. And we also, th yes, thank you. We also thank our other sponsors, lynda.com, TrueCar, UCLA Anderson School of Management, MCS, Acquia, Opt, the UCLA IT Services, and UCLA Extension. And then the people. Yes, thank you. The people behind this event, there are really too many to mention all by name. Um, but I want to uh, draw your attention to the planning committee and advisory committee members who are listed on page one and two of your program booklet. We thank them very much for their thoughtfulness, their time, their resources, their networks, all the things that go into making a terrific convening. Um, there is one error in the program booklet for which I, I take uh, responsibility. We accidentally left out a very important advisory committee member who actually came up with the title for this event. Jane Margolis, who's right up here. Jane, thank you so much for your support throughout the planning process. Um, I also want to recognize our event co-chairs. Uh, first and foremost, Rebecca Sadwick, who's done a terrific job as project manager. Uh, Rebecca, where are you? 
All right, thank you, Rebecca. And then the, the two other co-chairs, uh, Colleen Callahan, my right-hand woman at the Luskin Center, our deputy director, and Davida Johnson from the UCLA Office of uh, Information Technology, or OIT. Thank you guys so much for your leadership. I'll now turn it over to Davida to make a few welcoming remarks. Good morning, everyone. Um, thanks, JR. Uh, my name is Davida Johnson. I'm with the Office of Information Technology here at UCLA. Um, I work as the Director of Community Partnership Programs and under the direction and leadership of Vice Provost Jim Davis. And um, it's been an honor working with the Luskin School for this event today. And it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to this conference today, and I, I hope you will enjoy the day. Um, as we were sending out invitations for the event, I was very pleased to hear that many of the, the companies that are here today have their own women in technology groups within their, or, their own organizations. And if you don't, this is probably a good thing to take back to your company to, to start one. Um, and this conference is not just about rallying behind a good cause or an important topic, um, or even just to sit, discuss your own personal stories and challenges of, with being a, women, being a woman in tech. Um, although those are important things to, to note and to, and it's who you are. Um, but we're, today we are focusing on really working together so that we can solve a problem that's bigger than us as individuals. So throughout the day, I encourage you to break away from your comfort zone, meet people who are not from your organization, um, work together with them, make contacts, exchange information, and, and make this the, the beginning of something great um, in the future. So have fun today and participate. Thank you. Thank you, Davida. I now want to welcome uh, Nancy Perlman. Nancy is the Goldhurst Fellow in Technology and Innovation at the Office of the Los Angeles, uh, Los Angeles City. Um, uh, she'll give us a keynote on behalf of the City of Los Angeles. Good morning. On behalf of Mayor Garcetti, welcome. And thank you to UCLA for hosting this fantastic event. Um, I feel very grateful to be here this morning. In January, I participated in a panel at a Think Forward event and mentioned the upcoming Wonder Women Tech Conference, LA's first ever official event focused on supporting women in tech. Afterwards, a woman named Ruby Guillen introduced herself to me. Ruby is a senior systems analyst with ICANN Associates and told me about her dedicated work in the area of child protection services. Ruby ended up bringing a team of developers to Wonder Women Tech and participated in the event's hackathon. They created one of the winning apps called Hands Off, which enables users to notify law enforcement about incidents of child sex trafficking. We don't hear much about child sex trafficking, but it's happening around us all the time, right here in Los Angeles. Ruby was thrilled to find a forum where she could take her important idea and make it real. Wonder Women Tech is just one example of how Los Angeles is supporting gender equity. We're fortunate to have a mayor who makes the issue a high priority. Most notably, the city just released the first part of a ground groundbreaking report on the status of women and girls in Los Angeles. Created by Mount St. Mary's University and funded by the Commission on the Status of Women and Girls, the report examines gender equity through the lenses of demographics, leadership, education and workforce development, public safety, and LA's veterans. By identifying challenges that prevent women from reaching their full potential, the report will also help Los Angeles to fulfill its commitment to CEDAW, the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. To quote Mayor Garcetti, our city only succeeds if everyone has an equal shot at success. For too long, our women and girls have been left behind and counted out. And I want Los Angeles to lead in employing and empowering women. For the first time in city history under Mayor Garcetti's administration, Los Angeles has achieved gender parity in terms of membership on LA's boards and commissions. Among all 41 boards and commissions in the city, women now hold 54% of filled positions. There's good news in the private sector as well. 
LA is home to the second largest number of women-owned businesses in the nation, more than 136,000, a number that's increased by 25% over the past decade. Overall, nearly one-third of all privately held firms in the city of Los Angeles are owned by women. So we have insight about what's happening with gender equity in the city in terms of governance and businesses, but we still need to address the big question of the day. What are we missing? First, we don't know about all the incredible women working in technology. Mainly, we hear about how women aren't there. With a show of hands, please let me know if you've heard these names. Maggie Goodrich, Salita Reynolds, Eileen Decker. They are respectively the Chief Information Officer for the Los Angeles Police Department, the General Manager for the Department of Transportation, and the Deputy Mayor for Homeland Security and Public Safety. Each of these women are deeply immersed in technology on a daily basis, and their decisions affect us all. They're smart, incredibly resourceful, and for the record, super cool. Gwen Shotwell, the President and COO of SpaceX, Jean Holm, Chief Knowledge Architect at NASA's JPL, and Monica Doty, Managing Director and Co-Founder at the Women's Venture Capital Fund, are just a few of the many women raising the bar in the private sector. Why aren't we hearing about them, talking about them, telling our kids and colleagues and friends about them? I'm not sure I have the answer, but I do know that the more we talk about them, the more we amplify the stories around these role models, the more we shift perception, and as we all know, perception radically affects reality. So the next time you hear a story about one of these women, please share it, tweet it, pin it, and more importantly, take note of it yourselves. What else are we missing? Lena Nilsson, the Innovation Director at the Bloom Center for Developing Economies at UC Berkeley, argues in a recent New York Times op-ed that meaningful jobs are the key to engaging women in tech. In academia, there's a clear trend of women studying engineering related to social good. Lena and her, contact, her colleagues contacted dozens of universities with programs aimed at reducing poverty and inequality. At the University of Michigan, my alma mater, and one of the most famous computer engineering schools in the world, 51% of the undergraduates opting for an international minor in engineering are women. These women are embedded in some of the most traditional engineering fields industrial operations, and mechanical and chemical engineering. UC Berkeley, MIT, Arizona State University, same story. The key finding here is that the classes weren't designed with the main goal of appealing to female engineers. The appeal is a focus on engineering with a distinct social context and purpose. From the hallowed halls of academia to practicalities of the city, a local example of women engaging in tech with a social bent is Kabira Stokes' company, Isidore Recycling. Kabira worked as a senior field deputy for then city council president, Eric Garcetti, where she focused on public safety and youth development issues. Kabira parlayed her experience into a startup that combined sustainability and social good by recycling electronics and creating employment opportunities for people who have successfully exited California's correctional system. When Isidore became a founding partner of Our Cycle, launched by the LA Clean Tech Incubator, the city opted to work with Isidore to recycle 10,000 computers, rather than its usual e-waste vendor in Fresno. This is a near perfect example of a woman hitting a home run through meaningful work that combines technology and sustainability with employment for the disadvantaged. It's an inspiring story and one that can serve as a model for all of us. And finally, right now, Outside of the university environment, the main place women are learning about tech is at the grassroots level. Meetup.com lists almost 8,000 meetups worldwide where women are learning about programming, and thousands more for electronics, makerspaces, education, and tech. Connecting in the real world and sharing the same goal goes a long way. Meanwhile, local groups like General Assembly and Sabio offer fantastic classes, and free online classes abound through the Central Library. These resources need to be a much bigger part of the conversation. And at City Hall, we're working internally to empower women. This year, we launched City Hall X, a monthly series where a senior female member of the executive team shares her story followed by discussion. It's a simple format, but sharing stories inspires change. It's a, we adopt a common narrative, and it gives us access to a higher goal. It's how women got the right to vote. 
The first City Hall X session was in January and leadership training quickly bubbled to the top of the discussion. There's no lack of ambition among the women at City Hall. Some just need the tools to navigate the future they want to see. So to recap, what can we be doing better? Sharing stories, creating jobs, joining community. Today's extraordinary technologies offer all of us opportunities for a safer, more prosperous, and more sustainable city. From universities to the government to the private sector, women are reaching out, making our city better for themselves and all of us. We're empowered in our everyday lives to create gender equity in our city. We just need to choose to do so. Thank you.